Hello, this week you guys got introduced to your first case study that will be due. Um, there will be probably two case studies this quarter. This first one is going to be due on gram positive coxie, which we will start working with and introducing in our lecture material this week. So these two case studies are both considered your research assignments, so they are worth a good percentage of the grade. I find that um, people who turn these in late or don't turn them in at all, it hugely impacts their grades. So my suggestion to you would be, if you're ever concerned about your grade, if anything, always get your case study research projects done. Um, over all other assignments, these should come first. So this one that we'll talk about here is going to be, should be found in your week five items, and it's going to be due at the end of week six. So I just want to go through my expectations for the case study and the criteria and how to basically write this. I find this to be easier to write than just like an essay paper, so hopefully you guys will too, and it's more pertinent to microbiology. So the first thing is you're going to pick a topic or a bacteria. You can basically pick any bacteria or disease caused by any gram-positive coxie bacteria. So the two main genres of gram-positive coxie would be staphylococcus, or streptococcus, there is another one that is also discussed, enterococcus. Any of those three genre of bacteria would work. So pick a specific one or pick a disease that's specifically caused by one of those. Again, we'll be learning about staphylococcus this week. Next week, we will get into streptococcus and enterococcus. So you will learn about these, and then as we're learning them, you can start typing up your case study, essentially. So once you pick your disease and your bacteria, you are going to make a case study. So these are the criteria on how to make this case study. So remember, whenever you have read a case study, it usually introduced a patient with symptoms, um, had these many symptoms and clinical findings from the physician's aspect, and then it went into test results, and then after several test results, it kind of determined what it was for a diagnosis, how do you treat it, what is that disease, that kind of thing. So similar to this, you are going to do the same thing. You are thoroughly creating this yourself. Do not go and find a case study online and copy and paste it and think that's your case study. I've had students do that before, and I've caught them doing that before, and I don't like it. Um, I don't want you guys to ever risk plagiarism. So this is something you're creating yourself. So once you pick, say we're going to pick strep throat, which I really don't like you guys to do strep throat. To me, it's too easy. Everybody kind of knows what strep throat is. But if I were going to say do strep throat, I'm going to first make up my patient history. So I'd be like, oh, you know, Katrina presented to the Mayo Clinic with – Complaints of sore throat, fever, a rash, white patches in the back of her throat, swollen lymph nodes, you know, that kind of thing. So I made my presentation, my patient symptoms and clinical findings. You could write up CBC if you've taken hematology and understand heme results to, resu to reflect. Yes, there is a bacterial infection going on. You could run a throat culture because obviously if she has throat symptoms of strep throat, we're going to swab her throat and plate it and culture it. So for microbiology, you're going to, you know, collect that the culture that would be most pertinent to this symptoms going on. You're going to grow it out on the plates, and then you're going to discuss what's the colony morphology on those plates. What was the gram stain results? Because we always gram stain first. So in this case, it's going to, of course, be gram poscoxy. Pictures of either one of these would be awesome. Go Google images, find some pictures, make sure you reference them. Um, and then appropriate biochemical test results here. These are what you're going to start learning in this next week or two. So you'll understand those results to put down there to help identify the bacteria that's growing. And then you basically come up with your diagnosis. And then you talk about, okay, how are you going to treat that patient now that we know what they have? And then the other big part that people commonly forget about writing is the prognosis. Is this patient going to be okay? Are they, once they get their medicine, are they going to live a happy, healthy life and a little bit recovered? Are they going to have some sort of side effect forever from it? Are they going to be very much at risk? You know, talk about the clinical course or prognosis for that patient. And then the very end should be your discussion of the infection. So this should be a nice, robust discussion, not just two sentences. I want some good amount here. So things that commonly should be included in the discussion would be 
what's the incidence? You know, how many, how much does this happen? Is this one in 10,000 people get this? Or is it really common? You know, the incidence of how much this occurs. Talk about the bacteria, the main features of the bacteria. So things like mode of transmission. How do people come and they get this bacteria? Where's the reservoir? Where is it normally found? Um, the virulence factors that this bacteria has. So how does it cause disease? Different diseases that are associated with it. You could even talk about the infection or disease the patient had a bit more. Um, epidemiology, all those things that are relevant to learning about this bacteria, because this case study is essentially a learning tool. So now you might be still confused on this, but I do have an example here a, a student did. First and foremost, you're going to see that, of course, we're in APA styling. So there's definitely a title page. If you're not comfortable with APA formatting, seek somebody out on your campus to help you, or there's amazing APA formatting tools online. I know that the Purdue OWL is something I always used a lot to help me. That's online. You can search Purdue OWL. But so basically you have your case, you have your title page, then you scroll into it. So you see here this student started with a history and physical. They talked about, oh, it's a seven-year-old Hispanic girl was seen at this clinic. She had a sore throat. Um, this is quite in-depth. You don't have to necessarily go this in-depth, but they talked about a fever. Oh, she's pale with red cheeks. Tonsils are swollen. She even showed a picture here. You don't necessarily have to put a picture there of it. All right. The next one is, okay, well, what does this start to tell us? Well, it looks like it's signs of strep throat here, and here's why these go with it. They did a rapid strep test, and then they did a throat culture because that all goes along with the symptoms. Again, they talked about the colony morphology. How does it look on the agar plate? They showed a picture of it, and they referenced where they got it. Which of the next step be? It's always gram stain. So they did the gram stain picture here as well. And then they did biochemical testing. Again, we're going to learn about these biochemical tests this week and next week. So they did all of that. And then finally, they talked about, okay, how am I going to treat this? How am I going to do prognosis? They right away started with prognosis is excellent. With the treatment of this antibiotic, the patient should begin to feel better in a few days. And then they discussed it. You can discuss the disease itself. And then you'll notice they discussed through the disease and that sometimes this bacteria can also result in these other diseases. Um, they went into more depth on antibiotics. I would also like to see a little bit more than this, just like, what is a typical reservoir mode of transmission virulence factors like we said in here as well she probably did get dinged on that part and then again because it's APA format you of course have your references on the last page now you'll notice there's not any direct citations in here um, it is a little different than a case study you know if you're just basically summarizing that's fine you can direct cite within here especially if you're pulling a direct quote out of the text or or out of the reference you know make sure you put a citation in there she did cite her sources here on the pictures so right underneath but yeah basically if you guys want to keep it the exact same format as this one right here you can you know you see it, if you format it exactly how it looks right here I'd be happy um, I'd be exact I'd be really happy this would be perfect this is the reason I show you this one because I think it's a very well laid out case study if you've been through hematology class, you did the same things in heme. You had case studies in heme. So it's the exact same kind of format. It's just your testing is different because now we're in microbiology and not hematology. So hopefully that helps you understand your expectations for this week's assignment. Again, it's not due until the end of week six. If you do have questions or start getting confused on how to write it, please let me know. I'd be happy to go over it with you via phone or on WebEx or through email whatever it might be I'd be happy to help you with it because again if you do well on this it's great for your grade you know if you're doing really poorly on this it could drop your grade so because the research projects alone are worth 20% of your grade and there's only two of them so and this is the first one so that's 20% of your grade does make an impact um, all right so that's it for me if you have any questions like I said just reach out all right thanks guys